This is the AGM600, a budget-friendly, wired, ergonomic mouse from monitor giant AOC. Can a brand mainly known for producing monitors put out a decent mouse? Let's find out, shall we? Hey guys, I'm Matt and welcome to my full review of the AGM600 gaming mouse from AOC. This mouse costs around 40 quid, a pretty reasonable price if you ask me. But is the old saying, you get what you pay for, going to be true here? Let's put this mouse through its paces and find out. To kick things off in the usual fashion then, let's take a look at the design of the AGM600. This is a very sculpted mouse, quite clearly made with right-handed gamers in mind. The all matte black body has that stealthy look, which I really like, to be honest. The majority of the mouse is covered in a silky smooth UV cured coating, which I've got to stress is very, very smooth to the touch. Thankfully, there are two grippy rubber sections on either side to help keep things under control. The shape of the AGM600, as I mentioned, is very ergonomic and sculpted. On the left hand side is a thumb rest sitting just below the side buttons. The shape does taper off towards the right hand side, leading to a very comfortable resting position. It will suit people with large hands quite well. AOC advertises the AGM600 as being suitable for palm and claw grips. Now I'm a palm gripper myself and this mouse fills my hand quite nicely. There are a total of 10 programmable buttons, easily enough for most use cases in my opinion. There's obviously the standard trifecta of left click, right click and mouse wheel. Then there's the standard issue side buttons, a sniper mode button which will drop the DPI to 400 when pressed and held down to help with clicking heads when sniping. Then there's the DPI switching button just behind the mouse wheel. And finally, there's two extra buttons sitting just to the left of the left click button, bit of a mouthful, which by default will change the volume levels of your PC, but they can be reprogrammed. All of the buttons that I just mentioned can be reprogrammed using the G menu software, which we'll look at in more detail later in the video. The mouse does have RGB and it's not been overdone. The logo on the arse end of the mouse lights up as well as the small dot just behind the mouse wheel, which I expected to indicate the sensitivity level, but it just changes with the chosen RGB effect. It's a bit pointless. Then there's a strip around the base of the mouse, which is hidden when viewing the AGM600 from a normal angle, but it does add a slight glow to the mouse pad in darker environments. I like the way that AOC has implemented RGB on this mouse. It's not over the top. It looks pretty good to my eyes. Flipping the AGM600 on its head then, and the bottom is pretty run-of-the-mill stuff. There's a button for switching between the two onboard profiles and some quite large Teflon feet, which help it glide across my pad quite easily for a bulky mouse. Speaking of bulk, the AGM600 tips the scales at 115 grams. Moving on to speak about the build quality then, and we've got to bear in mind that this is a 40 quid mouse. The left and the right click buttons are both quite clicky, but they have a slight bit of pre-travel before the KL switches will actuate. The mouse wheel does shift a little bit in its housing. It feels good while clicking it down and scrolling, but this side to side play does concern me a little bit. The rest of the buttons do leave a bit to be desired as well. They all feel slightly mushy and spongy. The side buttons are slightly better than the two found on the left click button, the two, those two extra buttons. Overall, they're not terrible, but there's certainly nothing to write home about either. Kind of par for the course when considering the price. The non-detachable 1.8 meter USB cable is braided. It's got decent quality molding for the connect housings and it feels pretty well made. It's quite thick, which is both a good and a bad thing in my opinion. While it will last a while, I think, it also kinks really easily. It doesn't lie flat on the desk. Now, AOC back the AGM600 with a two year warranty. So if anything were to go wrong, they should have you covered. So far then, the AGM600 is doing all right. It's got a, a nice-ish design. I know that's personal preference. It's built okay for a 40 quid mouse. Uh, it's kind of respectable when you consider the price. So far, it's so good. Here's a quick sound test so you can hear what all the switches and buttons sound like.
Moving on to look at the performance then, and this is a heavy mouse, it's a heavy feeling mouse. It's got some pretty hefty stopping power when flicking and sweeping it across a mouse pad. Obviously this will depend a little bit on what sort of pad you're using, but in general, it's a kind of bulky yet precise feel when gaming with the AGM600. The mouse does glide quite well when you put some force behind your movements, but in general, I feel it will suit higher sense gamers a little bit better than lower sense arm aimers. I mainly play FPS and RPG games, and I've given this mouse a thorough trial in Battlefield, Call of Duty, DayZ, games like that, and just general use over the past few weeks, and it feels all right. The weight and feel on the mouse pad definitely help me feel like I'm being a bit more precise with my aim, but on the flip side, micro adjustments did take some getting used to. The shape has been comfortable overall, but the sniper button, which admittedly I don't use much when gaming on this or any other mouse that has that feature, is a little bit out of reach for me. And that might be the, the fault of the mouse, or it might be my really small thumbs. The sensor found inside the AGM600 is the Pixar PMW3389. It's capable of up to 16,000 DPI with the ability of handling up to 50 Gs of acceleration, and it's got tracking speed capabilities of up to 400 IPS. That's plenty enough to handle fast flicks and sweeps. The mouse pulls at 1000 Hz, which is pretty much standard for wide peripherals, and there is a debate to be had over whether going over 1K makes any perceivable difference, but that's a conversation for another video altogether. The AGM600 also supports NVIDIA Reflex Analyzer, so if you've got a monitor that supports it, you can connect the mouse to the USB port that offers that feature and measure just how responsive your clicks are. Unfortunately, my monitor doesn't have this feature, so it's not something I've been able to test. The switches, as I mentioned earlier, are made by Kale and are rated up to a maximum of 80 million clicks easily enough for a monster cookie clicker session. The AGM600 is a wired only mouse, so there's no dongles or anything like that to talk about, just a good old fashioned USB type A cable. The software used to set up the mouse is AOC's G menu, and this is the first time that I've used this software and I was pleasantly surprised. It's well designed, it looks decent, it works quite quickly, and using it has been a trouble free experience since the moment I installed it. The option to remap all of the buttons apart from the left click is laid out well, simple to use, and there are options for assigning buttons with modifier keys like Alt and stuff, something which is really useful for games with loads of inputs like Escape from Tarkov for example. The sensitivity tab does what you'd think. There are six programmable DPI levels that can be changed with any button programmed to cycle through them, and there's also the option to adjust the double click pointer and scroll speed, and then finally the polling rate, which tops out at 1000 hertz, as I mentioned earlier. Then topping it all off, there is the light effects and light effects sync tabs, which is home to the customization options for the onboard RGB. Light effects sync allows synchronization between any and all AOC, RGB, G menu compatible devices that are connected to your rig. But disappointingly for the AGM600, there's only four lighting preset options. I'd like to have seen a few more, but this is this is a mouse after all, so options for RGB customization will always be more limited than on a keyboard, for example. So summing all of that up then, this is a great mouse for the money, I feel. For 40 quid, you're getting a relatively well-built mouse with a decent sensor and good quality switches. The weight and the design won't be to everyone's tastes, but if you do prefer a larger mouse with some heft to it, then this might be a good suggestion for you to check out. The software works well and I've never had any problems with it. AOC have managed to pack in some pretty decent features to this budget priced gaming mouse and I for one think that's great. Not everyone wants to spend a fortune on a mouse and that shouldn't mean that you have to put up with something that's crap. And that's the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. If you want links to any of our, our merch store or our Discord server or our website, they'll all be down in the video's description down below to check out if you want to. Um, I've been Matt, this has been the AOC AGM600 Gaming Mouse, a decent budget option in my opinion. I'll speak to you in the next one, look after yourselves, see you later.